I have a past. We all do. Sometimes there's an urge to hide it or run from it or pretend it didn't exist or pretend that the person that I was then isn't in some way still inside me now. I am ready to show the truth. Do I actually have a neck? How is it possible that I was the number one school slut in all of Oakville, Ontario when I look so disturbing now? Who was I before the boas, before the green hair, before the robes, before the forever scarf? Who was I before I became the most extra cult leader in all of North America? I am ready to show you everything. 2001, 11. A lesbian stance before you know what the word lesbian means. Innocent, mild, normal. Grade six, braless puberty. 2003, 13. I took this picture of myself from my sister's wedding. I cut it out with fancy scissors used for crafting and scrapbooking. Then I found a picture of a flower and I glued a picture of myself to the center of the flower. Because why? I was born a megalomaniac and I will remain a megalomaniac till the end of my days. Grade 10, I ironed a Gumby decal to my stepdad's t-shirt. 2004, 14, in a terribly pathetic emo phase. 2006, 16, with my mom and my sweet sisters and a malnourished frame due to a moderate eating disorder and too much cocaine. 2006, 16, me with pea yellow hair and wearing a bikini. That's just straight up friendship. 2006, 16, sad and malnourished. 2006, 16, sad and malnourished. 2006, 16, sad and malnourished. 2007, 17, I dressed up as Edie Sedgwick for a Halloween party, but looked absolutely nothing like Edie Sedgwick and really just wanted to look like a poorer Mary Kate Olsen. 2007, 17, prom, where I took a girl, even though some boys asked me, and yet still somehow didn't know I was gay. 2007, 17, me with my first boyfriend, a kind male feminist with a big dick who I was not cool to. 2008, 18, started eating again and then momentarily posed with my brother like he was my boyfriend for some reason. 2008, 18, after stealing an Indiana Jones hat from my cousin. 2008, 18, wearing the brown see-through Victorian dress that I wore every single day for over a year. 2009, 19, 2010, 20, the beginning of the forever scarf. This is going to sound fucking dumb, but the dumbest part is how sincere I am about it. I haven't always looked like this, but this has always been inside me. For years, I worked really hard in my own way to be palatable, to be fuckable, to be wanted by dudes, which was the currency I thought you had to have as a woman to have value. Devoting a large part of my energy to trying to be palatable hid light within me that I didn't know was there until I stopped trying to be digestible for other people. I am deeply insecure and I have a lot of shit to work through, but I fucking accept my insecurities and I fucking accept my light. The feeling of being held back by invisible rules of how a girl should be, that you're never really told, but you somehow ingest. There are much worse things in this world but that doesn't negate the fact that the feeling of those rules stifled who I am. But I'm grateful for it because if I had never been stifled, I wouldn't be aware of how good it feels now to be free. Some people don't digest me, but my life and my body and my light isn't here to make those people feel comfortable.